Hello Inspector First Rate, you've been checking out the Inspector Calls questions. What clues have you picked up about what's coming up this year? Okay, so actually when it comes to these questions, AQA has actually left lots of clues that we can use to predict what's going to come up in this year's exams. Now, looking at 2017, 18, 19, 20, 21 and 22, there's kind of a series of ideas that might lead us to identify the Royal Crime, which is this exam that's taking place this year. Oh, okay. So, what have you what have you detected is likely to come up next with the character question? Okay, so when it comes to the character questions, in 2017, what was really interesting is that we had two characters that appeared. We had a Mrs. Berlin question, how she presented as unlikable, but then we also had an Inspector Ball question, which then also tied to a theme-related question in terms of how is Inspector Ball used to suggest the ways that society could be improved. Now, in terms of considering these two characters, what could students talk about if this came up in the actual exam? So, whatever the character comes up, Priestley's main purpose is to change society. So that's your way in. You know what he wants to say about society and just link that to any character you're presented with. That's my top advice. Okay, now what then I found in terms of the clues as they are building up and as a number of leads build up is in 2018, AQA then started splitting one character question versus a theme question. And in 2018, we had the first Eric question. Yeah. How does he change his attitude towards himself and others? And the theme question that students had to answer was to do with how social class is presented. How could somebody tackle that type of question? Uh, right, well, I always advise my students to ignore the character question and go straight in in the themes. Okay. Now, the reason for that is at the top of the mark scheme, you have to write about the writer's perspectives. And guess what? The writer's perspectives are always in the theme question. So it's impossible not to write well unless you don't know the play. However, if you're writing about the character, you kind of get into the character. You've got your favourites, you've got the ones you dislike. I hate Gerald, for example. And you could forget to write about the themes. So you might write brilliantly, but you don't get the top grades because you haven't considered the author's perspective. So for me, always go for the second question, it always comes second, on the themes. Okay, now in 2019, we had our first Sheila question. So the character question was how Sheila is presented as a character that learns lessons. And the theme for the 2019 paper was how is selfishness and the effects of selfishness presented? How could somebody go about answering these questions? With Sheila and selfishness, well, they're both actually connected, aren't they? Because if you think about it, when Eva got sacked from the Berlin's factory, she was able to get another job. And if that had been the only moral crime against her, she would have been fine. But what changed her completely and turned her into relying on men and possibly being sexually exploited was actually Sheila's selfishness getting her sacked. Now, I love this because I see the play as a kind of feminist text, even though it was written by a man and even though it was written in 1945, I think Priestley is deliberately looking at women and saying, look, you guys are the future. You've got the vote in 1945 where they didn't in 1912. And so he's deliberately trying to show women that they can change the future of the country. Uh, and so that links in with his idea of social responsibility. Let's get rid of being selfish. Let's all look after each other. Okay, now in 2020, we had the first Mr. Berlin question. How is Mr. Berlin presented as a character who cares only for himself and his family? That was a character question. However, the theme question, which seems a little bit challenging, yeah. is how the male characters are presented as irresponsible. So how would you go about answering that? Well, again, if I'm looking at it as a feminist play, then obviously he's going to present the male characters in a negative light. Not because he's sexist, it's because men have all this power in society, and when you've got power, it's really hard not to exploit it. Like, who doesn't want an advantage in life? And uh, so what he's saying is society is geared up towards men, and so they will inevitably exploit those who are weaker. We see that in the capitalist system, but that's also mirrored in the way these same capitalist men treat women, and we use Eva as the one to show, look, this is the consequence of how you behave towards women. It's going to end symbolically in their destruction. Again, the audience in 1945 is largely going to be female. The men still coming back from war 
And so it's a really powerful message to women that they can really change what happens post-1945. Okay, now for 2021, we were asked to look at Gerald for the character question. How is Gerald's character used to show ideas about responsibility? And the theme question is, how is society presented as unfair? Which actually seems fairly similar to the 2017 question. Now, how would you go about answering that? Well, the Gerald one, because you know I hate him most. <laughs> uh, I hate him because he pretends to have changed. He pretends that he can now get married to Eva. But actually, he's the one who deceives himself most. Like Eric commits worse crimes, but he feels guilty about it. Gerald doesn't feel any guilt at all. And I love the ending of the play where he offers the ring and then there is the telephone ring. Mm -hmm. So it's like when Berling talks about just looking after your own family and yourself, that summons the inspector. When Gerald says, how's about this ring to Sheila, then the telephone rings, he has summoned the new inspector. Okay. And so for me, that is the key thing. If the Burlings don't learn the lesson, well, maybe that doesn't matter because they're not the future. Gerald is the future. When he doesn't learn the lesson, then the tragedy unfolds. So that's how I go in with Gerald. And how is society unfair? Well, you can look at every single one of the characters and how they exploit Eva. So that is exactly how unfair society is. And then you can look at, well, how did Priestley want to change society? Okay, we're going to have a socialist government, we're going to have a welfare state, so there'll be no relying on charity like Mrs. Burlings, and uh, you won't be able to operate cartels like the Crofts and the Burlings do, so you'd have to pay people a fair wage, and so on. Okay, and last year, so students who are currently in year 11, when it came to last year, the students before you had to sit the following questions. So the character question that came up was, Eric for a second time. So how is Eric presented as a character who learns his lessons? And the theme question that came up is how is inequality presented in society as leading to tragedy? Now, I think for the themes, there seems to be kind of a trend, right? This idea of society, shifting yeah, in society. 100%. So how would you go about answering that? So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take society as my prediction to come up for the themes. And uh, I'm just going to follow the play through chronologically. I'll start with the thesis statement, which comes up with why is Priestley obsessed about society? Mm -hmm. So he wants to change how women are treated. He wants to change how workers are treated, the millions of John Smiths and, um, and Eva Smiths. And he wants people to take responsibility by looking out for each other. That social responsibility, which is linked to the Christian message, we are members of one body. That language comes directly from the communion because 80% of the audience would have been Christian. And Priestley is saying, hey, look, you're a Christian. You can't afford not to be socialist. They're the same values. Uh, so those are the three ways he wants to change society. And then I'll just pick my key moments that do that. I'm always going to go to the end. You've seen my interpretation of the end with the ring. Um, I'm always going to look at the symbolism of the two deaths, the first death of Eva and then this other woman who appears to have died and they represent the two world wars. More of that in my other videos because it's also an anti-war play which many people miss. Uh, so change society, make everybody better, let's stop war. Which character do you think would come up? So uh, I wrote my guide to an inspector calls, I can't remember when it was, it was probably about 2019, and so I also looked at the specimen papers, and I then looked at all the questions the AQA used to ask, and the top character was Sheila, and so my prediction is, I think Sheila's going to come up, um, so she's the one I'd revise. Okay, well... I have a slightly different approach and a different take on the character that I think would come up. Come on, then. I think Inspector Ball is a very strong contender. Only because, number one, he only appeared once in 2017. Yeah. He's obviously Priestley's mouthpiece in terms of conveying the message of social responsibility, how society must change. But I think he's, he's a very interesting character that hasn't really been touched on too much, but I think he's a very strong contender. Now, in terms of themes, I'm going to be a little bit cavalier and suggest that the theme of gender might come up as well. So I think this could be maybe an inversion, the opposite way of presenting this question that came up in 2020. So rather than the male characters and how they're presented, perhaps how is gender presented through the 
female characters and what does this illustrate about how Priestley is conveying perhaps a more feminist message in terms of treating women better when we consider both Eva, Daisy Renton, but also the Berling women. So this is Sheila and Mrs. Berling. So I think that would be really interesting to consider too. Oh, that would be such a great question. And you're right about Inspector Gould, actually. I mean, this would be a godsend if the Inspector Gould comes up, because most of your essay is going to be that, what he says at the end of... Um, of his time in the play and when he disappears, all the fire and blood and anguish. There are probably about eight quotations just in that one speech. So I'd love that one to come up. That would be really interesting. Thanks so much guys for listening. Can it magnify you at the same time? If I go forward and you're in the background. Or even I can just look like confused. Yeah. But you're the one, because you're the inspector, right? Okay, yeah, yeah. So, right? I, can, so I can get really inspecting. Really, there we go. And Thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed this prediction lesson. Now, if you're curious to find out our predictions for the upcoming power and conflict exams, make sure you head over to Mr. Salas' channel where I will go over with him the past paper questions as well as our predictions for the upcoming power and conflict exam.